Number 10. Iron rusts from disuse, water loses its purity and stagnation, even so does stagnation sap the vigor of the mind. Da Vinci had a very powerful mind, and, like a muscle, he knew the importance of exercising it. Constantly, basically daily, Da Vinci was learning and creating, filling his notebooks with intricate designs, and studying intensely the world around him. His greatest intellectual achievements were the products of hours upon hours spent in study and work. Da Vinci was also quoted as saying, The noblest pleasure is the joy of understanding. Number 9. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Da Vinci believed that the surest way to understand something was to be able to explain it simply and understand all of the basic concepts behind something. Having a very convoluted understanding of something confuses not only the person to whom you may be explaining something, but may even confuse you at times. Break it down to its essentials. Number 8. Anyone who conducts an argument by appealing to authority is not using their intelligence, they are using their memory. Closely related to this, Da Vinci was also quoted as saying, Where there is shouting, there is no true knowledge. Da Vinci questioned the legitimacy of everything. Every power structure of the day he believed was open to his interpretation, and in Renaissance Italy, there were plenty of authoritarian power structures to question. He believed that the authority and dominance was not sufficient for their word to be followed. What someone said had to make sense logically and objectively. Number 7. Poor is the pupil who does not surpass the master. Da Vinci believed that it was not only important for a student to learn everything that they could from the teacher, but that a good student had the obligation of taking that knowledge and going further with it on their own. Da Vinci was such a student. It is said that around the age of 20, when Da Vinci's teacher Verrocchio observed the work he had done on an angel in a painting, he is said to have put down his brush and declared that he would never paint again. Da Vinci had surpassed him. Number 6. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. Da Vinci was the sort of person who would spend hours and hours in contemplation, exploration, and design, but also learned very well the importance of implementing his ideas and applying his knowledge in the real world. Though his notebooks filled with designs and theories are amazing, some of Da Vinci's greatest moments were in utilizing that knowledge. Number 5. It had long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and happened to things. This is somewhat related to the thinking behind number 6. Da Vinci had a desire to be an accomplished individual, and in fact he did accomplish many things in life, and worked for and with many other great individuals of Renaissance Italy in fields like art, politics, and even a little bit of war. But these opportunities didn't just come to him. He went out and sought after them vigorously. Number 4. How many emperors and how many princes have lived and died and no record of them remains? Yet, they only sought to gain dominions and riches that their fame may be everlasting. Da Vinci wanted to be an accomplished person, but he was not after what he considered to be superficial fame and material accomplishment. He valued greatly achievements in science, philosophy, and art, things that he believed would better himself and humanity. It was in his contributions in these fields that he would have a lasting effect on humanity. And that was more important than any fame he could acquire. Number 3. You can have no dominion greater or less than that of yourself. Da Vinci believed that the greatest battles were waged over one's internal weaknesses, and that the greatest victories were those over them. He was not a military or political leader, he was very starkly an individual, and his life was spent on improving himself as much as possible. Number 2. I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. This is not so much a piece of advice as it is a quote which represents how Da Vinci thought. Da Vinci was very hard on himself, as we said in number 3. He was constantly seeking to better himself and to improve on everything he could. Being satisfied with yourself can lead to stagnation, which in Da Vinci's mind is a bad thing. His mind was always going further. He may have been a bit too hard on himself though, and somewhat sadly those were actually his last words. However, don't be too sad because Da Vinci also said, Number 1. As a well-spent day brings happy sleep, so a well-spent life brings happy death. In many aspects, we can see Da Vinci was actually satisfied with many parts of his life. He spoke these words in old age, believing he had done well and lived life very well and fully. Death is an inevitability for all of us, but whatever death is, Da Vinci believed that it won't be quite so bad if it has been preceded by a rich and fulfilling life, and in fact, 
Living such a life is all we can do in the face of it.